The most commonly called the DCP is a simple but effective tool for the testing of soil strengths. This video will instruct you on the Minnesota Department of Transportation's method of DCP operation, maintenance, and test results analysis. We will begin the operation with an overview of the DCP's components. The DCP basically consists of two assemblies contained on 16 millimeter diameter steel shafts coupled near the midpoint. The upper shaft assembly has a handle at the top used to hold the device upright during testing. This handle also limits the upward travel of the sliding hammer. The bottom of the upper shaft assembly contains a slip fit plug used to simply connect the upper shaft assembly to the lower shaft assembly. The final component of the upper shaft assembly is a sliding drop hammer. This hammer is solid steel and weighs exactly 8 kilograms or 17.6 pounds. It is raised and dropped repeatedly to drive the lower shaft assembly into the soil being tested. At the top of the lower shaft assembly is what is called the anvil. This serves two purposes. Number one, to stop the dropping hammer. And number two, it serves as the connection point to the upper shaft assembly. A heavy duty bolt is used to keep the two assemblies together. The lower shaft is marked in five millimeter increments to allow measurement of the penetration of the device into the soil. At the bottom of the lower shaft assembly is the cone tip. It screws onto the lower shaft and is periodically replaced as it wears out during testing. The Minnesota Department of Transportation uses a cone with a 60 degree angle point. Most DCP devices are equipped with a remote scale device for operator convenience. The remote scale is marked in identical increments as the lower shaft of the DCP. It is guided at the top by a steel tube. The top of this tube is also the reference point at which penetration measurements are taken. The remote scale is guided at the bottom by another steel tube. This tube serves to keep the scale parallel to the lower DCP shaft. Now that we've examined the components of the DCP, we will go step by step through the field testing procedure. Since the DCP testing device is driven into the ground, operator safety is of utmost importance. At all times, the operator must be aware of the location of buried utilities. Contact with buried electrical wires or natural gas lines could result in serious injury or death. If necessary, contact a local service such as Gopher State One Call to have utilities located before testing unfamiliar areas. We will begin by completing the lower shaft assembly. We assume the operator is using a remote scale device. If not, please disregard steps one and two. Slide the top of the remote scale through the upper guide tube. At the same time, slide the lower remote scale tube over the bottom of the lower shaft. After checking for excessive cone tip wear, screw the cone tip onto the bottom of the lower shaft. With the lower shaft resting vertically on the ground, carefully insert the upper shaft connection plug into the lower shaft anvil receptacle. Due to the tight fit of the connection plug, it is often necessary to gently use the sliding hammer to fully seat the connection. Complete the DCP assembly by inserting the connection bolt, washers, and hairpin clip. One washer is placed on either side of the anvil piece. Several items of preparation are necessary before starting the actual DCP test. The DCP is not intended to be driven through concrete or thick bituminous layers. If you intend to test beneath these surfaces, a core hole of at least 50 millimeters in diameter must be made. If a water-cooled coring device is used, the DCP test should be conducted immediately after coring to limit the saturation of the soil below. Excess surface water must be removed before testing. A DCP data collection sheet must be prepared before you begin your test. Here you see a standard form. Each type of DCP testing has a slightly different data sheet, but they all require similar basic information such as test location, type of soil being tested, and test date. The following procedure describes basic DCP testing of subgrade and base soils. Begin any DCP test by ensuring you have a flat level testing surface. Carefully place the DCP on the surface. If you're testing through a core hole, center the DCP so the lower shaft will not contact the wall of the hole. Any friction from contact may invalidate your test results. With one hand placed on the top handle, use the other hand to seat the cone tip by lifting and dropping the sliding hammer from a partial height. Stop the seating process once the widest part of the cone is below your testing surface. Establish reference point for reading the penetration of the lower shaft. If a second crew member is reading the lower shaft, a straight edge position on the ground next to the shaft will make a good reference point. 
The reference point must remain constant throughout the test. If a remote scale is being used, the top of the remote scale tube guide will serve as the reference point. On the test sheet, record the current shaft or remote scale reading as the penetration for below zero. Maintaining one hand on the top handle, use your other hand to raise the hammer until it contacts the handle. Use caution not to lift the entire DCP, which might break contact between the soil and the cone tip. Release the hammer, allowing it to fall freely to the anvil. Be careful not to influence the drop by forcing the hammer down or gripping the top handle too tightly. Using the reference point, record on the data sheet the penetration reading of the shaft or remote scale. Recording this as below number one. Repeat steps four and five, increasing the below number with each hammer drop. The raise and drop sequence is repeated until the entire lower shaft is buried or until the desired testing depth is reached. If the soil is very dense, you may drop the hammer several times between penetration readings and record the corresponding blow counts. If the total penetration is less than three millimeters for 10 consecutive hammer drops, stop the test to prevent damage to the DCP. If the lower shaft has penetrated its full length, lift the DCP using a specially equipped farm purpose jack. Begin the extraction by placing the jack tongue under the DCP handle. Pump the jack until the jack tongue can be placed under the DCP anvil. Then lower the jack and finish the extraction. It is highly recommended that the DCP not be extracted by forcefully striking the hammer against the DCP top handle. This will damage the DCP in a short amount of time. The only exception to this warning is in situations where the test was performed in a very soft material or the total test penetration was shallow. In these cases, lightly tapping the hammer against the handle should not affect the DCP's longevity. Clean the lower shaft and cone tip by wiping with a clean rag. Inspect the cone tip for excessive damage and replace when its widest section diameter is less than 18 millimeters. As best you can, fill the hole left in the soil by the DCP and restore the test surface to its original state. There are two major points of caution when operating a DCP. The first is to always be aware of the pinching hazard near the anvil area. Be sure to keep one hand on the top handle. Never grab the anvil area. The second point of caution is to lift the hammer slowly and release it cleanly, allowing at least two seconds between the drops. Lifting and dropping too rapidly may affect the results because the hammer's full energy may not be transferred to the lower shaft. Because the DCP is driven into the soil and other hard gravel layers, routine maintenance and care are required. To ensure the device operates properly, the following guidelines must be followed. Number one, monitor the condition of the connection bolt. Extra bolts should be kept in the DCP carrying case since they frequently break during testing. Number two, keep the upper shaft clean. Lubricate lightly if binding develops. Do not lay the DCP on the bare ground. Number three, monitor the DCP for excessive wear or broken wells. Because the DCP is a standardized testing device, the overall weight and dimensions must not change from specifications. Number four, replace the cone tip when its widest section diameter is less than 18 millimeters. DCP test results are expressed in terms of Materials Penetration Index, or DPI. The DPI is defined as the amount of vertical movement of the DCP cone produced by one drop of the hammer. It is expressed in units of millimeters per blow. Stiffer or stronger soils have a lower DPI than weaker soils. The DPI can be calculated most easily by transferring the data from a DCP testing sheet into a computer spreadsheet program. The first column of the spreadsheet should contain a history of blow counts recorded during a DCP test. The second column should contain the corresponding penetration readings recorded. The third column contains the penetration index, which is calculated by subtracting the previous penetration reading from the penetration reading being considered and dividing that difference by the difference in corresponding blow counts. Where PR equals penetration reading, BC equals blow count. When the DPI is plotted on a graph versus the testing depth, different soil layer depths and strengths can be observed. In addition to determining soil layer depths, the DPI can be correlated to other common soil strength measurements, such as the California Bearing Ratio, or CBR. DPI correlations will not be discussed in this video. As mentioned before, there are several specific applications of DCP testing used in the Minnesota Department of Transportation's construction specifications. Please refer to those specifications for any special DPI calculations that may be required. 
The information provided in this video should give you the ability to comprehend the minor changes of procedure and analysis outlined in those specifications. This concludes this video on the operation of the dynamic cone penetrometer. You should now have a good basic understanding of MnDOT's method of operation, maintenance, and data analysis for the DCP. As you gain experience in using the DCP, you will soon see that this simple yet effective soil testing device can provide valuable information toward your rehabilitation investigations or quality control of pavement construction. If you would like further information on DCP testing, please contact the Minnesota Department of Transportation's Grading and Base Office.